Well, it's raining cats and dogs outside today, so not doing anything outside. Um, I figured I would take this opportunity to tackle a subject that gets asked all the time anytime this RX-7 gets checked out. And that is, what in the world is going on with your intake? Everyone always keeps asking me what is up with having an actual intake and then also having ITBs. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to explain to you the reason, the function, everything about it so you can better understand what it is those intakes do and how this whole system works. Basically, for those of you who haven't seen it yet, this is my three rotor setup in one of my FDs. Um, it's running semi peripheral ports, which is the reason why those ITBs are on there. The factory intake manifold uses the, the factory ports in the motor, and each one of these runners goes to one of those ports. In a, in a rotary engine, there's two ways, there's two types of ports that you can have, technically. You can either have the ports that go through the side plates, which are typically called side ports, and then there are ports, like on, a fa on the factory plate, the exhaust port goes right through the rotor housing, as you can see right there. So there's ports that can go through the rotor housing, through, right through the side, which are called peripheral ports. So the peripheral ports actually work on their own. They're not connected to the side ports at all. And on this motor, I'm actually using both. So the factory ports, which are getting fed by that air filter and the main throttle body, go into the, uh, into the, the, the factory side plates through the side ports. And then the factory exhaust is a peripheral exhaust port. Well, on the ITV part, there's an actual extra port that goes into the side of the rotor housing or the, right through the periphery of the rotor housing, which makes that a peripheral port. So we have three semi, we call them semi-peripheral because they're not real big, they're kind of small, they're like the size of like a half dollar maybe, maybe an inch or so, inch and a half wide. So we call those semi-peripheral ports, and they are not always in, in operation. So what happens is the throttle linkage has a secondary throttle linkage that actually activates those, uh, those semi-peripheral ports. And the main throttle cable opens the main throttle. Well, as we get to a certain throttle input, then the... Uh, the semi-peripheral ports get opened up. So at about 50 to 60 percent throttle, as I'm depressing the accelerator, as I hit that 50 to 60 percent area, it starts to yank open the semi-peripheral ports. And that is how these open up. And they have their own separate injectors on it. Because if I'm below, like let's say, you know, 50% throttle, there's really not much air going in, so the primary injectors are capable of flowing enough fuel in order to supply uh, the motor with enough at those lower throttle angles. And as soon as those semi-peripheral ports open up, there's a huge rush of extra air that's going in. So the secondary injectors come into play, and that's how that works. So. Hopefully you guys have a little bit better understanding of the setup. Um, this is a pretty radical engine. It's uh, a very, very well developed setup. It's got ceramic apex seals. It has crazy amounts of balancing done and it revs really high. Those semi-peripheral ports don't really help much 
until you get up into the higher revs. They're only good up above, like let's say, six or 7,000 RPM. Below that RPM, the, the motor doesn't need any extra air, and when you open that up, it actually over, over, uh, over uh, feeds. It overfeeds that, the engine. So it's not necessary at those lower RPMs. But once you get up over 7,000 RPM, makes a pretty big difference. On the dyno, we were able to, to pick up about 45 wheel horsepower just from having those semi-peripheral ports open. So a pretty big gain once everything's clicking and banging. But without those ports at lower RPM, it's totally fine. It's the high RPM that it needs it. Um, this car is really fun. If you haven't seen it yet, go check out the other videos. There's tons of stuff. I've had it on the dyno, clearly. I've had it on the, on the road. I've, I've run it pretty hard. Uh, and, and it just sounds amazing being a three-rotor. So check it out. It's a very unique setup that Defined Auto Works built long, a long past 10 years or so. They've just been developing this setup. And there's still a couple of tricks that I'm not using yet on this motor that I intend to at some point. So really cool motor. Um, I'm really happy to have it and hopefully you guys enjoy it too. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask me. I'll do my best to explain stuff like this in you know, these videos and uh, hopefully it opens up a little bit of extra information for you guys that are wondering why I have extra throttle bodies on top of my uh, intake. So I plan to actually do a bunch of a bunch more stuff to this car in the future just right now is, is not the time I've, I've been focusing on other stuff clearly you guys have seen the, the Renly and other stuff that I'm building but I wanted to take that moment just to explain that to you on a factory 13b it's not worth doing the the, the, the peripheral ports just because it's never going to rev high enough to really take advantage of it and until you get to you know a certain power level so once you get over a certain power level you need more air then the peripheral ports will, will will help out but if you're not porting doing massive stuff to the to the motor to make it breathe at eight nine thousand rpm or higher then there's no reason to do that look at that bumper shout out jmt bot audio body for really coming through so nice carbon Round out a quick tour of the rest of the car just because I know a lot of people haven't seen it yet. Um, interior is completely race car. It's got a cage. It's running an RX-8 transmission because the RX-8 transmission is able to shift at real high RPM. So it works really well with this. Also have the matching RX-8 differential in the back with an OS Geiken uh, limited slip in place. So it takes care of that. The hideous over fenders that are here, or fender flares that everyone keeps bugging me about, are covering up a massively annoying uh, fender pull, which I, I'd rather see this than that, trust me. Um, but I plan to do some more to make this better in time. Got the Esprit rear wing, it's pretty cool. And then brakes wise, this thing's got some monster Brembo's all the way around. Uh, these are straight up race car brakes front and back so a pretty good upgrade for this car the Brembo's yeah and also running Alcon master cylinders twin master cylinders they're unassisted and we've got the pedals down there to match it Apex gauges all across. There's really nothing left in this car that's factory, which is fine by me because I have the RZ in the in the in the shop. That's a very very factory car. Got a set of bride seats, some Takata harnesses. Just an all-around cool car. It's I'm not trying to make power. I'm not trying to when I say not trying to make power. I'm not trying to to win any drag races with this car, do anything crazy like that. This is a straight up race car that's just fun to drive. I, I, I wanted a car, oh check out my arm sleeve by the way. I repurposed a sock. It's my freaking 
elbow is killing me, so I've got a sleeve on it. But um, anyway, the car is not a race car. It's just solely for the street, solely to have fun. And uh, well, not solely for the street, solely for the track, I should say. But I drive it on the street. It's still a registered car. It's got all of the, it's got everything it needs to be street legal, sort of, sort of. And uh, well, we're in Florida, it's easy. And it just does the job. So, um, if you guys, again, if you have any suggestions, you have any questions, just let me know. Leave it in the comments. I do read all the comments, I try to. If I miss your comment, I'm sorry, but I do try to read them all. And I really do like making videos for you guys. So, I know some of you are bored, You've probably seen it before, but a lot of you have it. So there it is in all her glory.